Survey says, cut that cord. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, serving up another quick way of some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories submitted by you using hashtag Good News Next Week. We've got that story about cutting the cord, plus smokers are jokers. But first, a story that we actually covered just a few weeks ago on New World Next Week. Cashless backlash, movement taking heat from D.C. DC lawmakers. Finally, people sort of pushing back against the idea that cash is evil and gross and everybody's just going to use credit. They're actually working on laws in D.C. mandating that places have to accept cash. You know, the thing that says legal tender of USA? Well, there's another important institutional body that's leapt to the defense of physical money. And who is it? Of course, it's China. More specifically, the People's Bank of China, which recently announced that all businesses that are not e-commerce must resume accepting cash by mid-August or risk being investigated. In a statement, the central bank also warned businesses and individuals not to hype up the cashless idea when promoting non-cash payment. Given that China is the world's largest mobile payment market with a record 81 trillion yuan, that's 12.8 trillion U.S. fiat dollars in mobile payments last year. The, B, the PBOC, as it's known, moves to defend cash as kind of significant. China was widely seen and is still maybe expected to be the first major nation to be completely cashless, although it looks like India might beat them to that punch. So we'll include that link to a couple of weeks ago on New World Next Week, cashless backlash taking heat from D.C. lawmakers as the war on cash has reached China. Our second story this week on Good News Next Week, episode 66, has us returning to a story that we've touched many, many times here in the media monarchy kingdom back in the archives. More on that in just a few moments. The rise of cord cutting shows no sign of slowing down as cable providers continue to raise prices and lower their quality. More users than ever are flocking to a new variety of cheaper, more flexible streaming alternatives of which seem to pop up by every week. More than 5.4 million cable TV subscribers, that's people, expected to cut the cord this year, 2018, resulting in essentially $5.5 billion of loss of revenue for traditional cable TV providers like AT&T, Charter, Verizon, and oh, Comcast. That's why they got into the ISP business. That hit, though, comes in comparison to the 4.8 million subscribers lost in 2017 and the 3.8 million people lost in 2016. So we'll include links to that research. Over 5 million U.S. consumers will cut the cord in 2018, and we'll give you the flashback to the story we've touched on right here in Good News next week. Actually, last fall, cord cutting winter is coming. We talked about last October 2017. That's pretty recent. We've talked about it as long ago as October 26th, 2009 on Media Monarchy, pulling the TV cord yet staying plugged in. At the time, it still has a little bit of the like, oh, gee whiz, everybody's watching stuff on the internet kind of tone to the article that's a little bit interesting. The other interesting bit is through those articles, you pretty much come away with the same thing, whether people say, yeah, we're cutting the cord or no, we're not. People were watching more TV than ever before, and that was in 2009. So we go from TV to smoking for our third and final story this week on your good news next week. Smoking rate in U.S. hits new low of 16%. A new survey, that's so many surveys this week, shows that a percentage of American adults who smoked at least one cigarette in the last week was 16%. This is in contrast to the numbers in the 1940s and 1950s, which averaged about 41% of the adult population. So the long-term look, since 1954, the percentage of the adult population that smokes in America has fallen 64.4%. Smoking rates among young adults, those aged 18 to 29, have declined most dramatically since 2001. I know we've kind of noted it seemed like a lot of people picked up smoking post-2008 recession, because of course smoking is a cheap appetite suppressant and it's, you know, a faux social thing that people do. But maybe it's actually less. Smoking rates among Americans aged 30 to 49 have fallen 8 percentage points over this time period. And the stubborn ones. Among older Americans, the data is pretty much the same. So when you think about all oh, those old people, they can't learn new stuff. Well, you can at least make fun of them for one thing. They're not smart enough to know that they should quit smoking the dirt sticks. We should note, for the telephone survey, Gallup interviewed 1,033 adults aged 18 and older 
living in all 50 states and, of course, the District of Criminals, the sampling error is plus or negative four percentage points. Will include NUS smoking rate hits new low at 16% originally from Gallup and a couple of other related kind of good news headlines that will include right here at the end somewhat related New South Wales father who juiced cannabis for his sick daughters avoids jail. It basically looks like the court was like you've done nothing wrong get out of here. And a little bit of more good news about Ross Ulbricht, actually. I think there's really good kind of momentum for the story of Ross Ulbricht, a.k.a. the Silk Road Dread Pirate. They dropped the murder for hire charges. So that's one of the biggest and more heinous charges that were actually hanging over Ross, and the ones that were the most without any evidence whatsoever. Ross Ulbricht's murder for hire charges dropped by U.S. Attorney, and his Change.org petition has long since cracked the 35,000 signatures needed to at least get some look at it by, hopefully, America's next top president. That is some of the ways that we are winning in Solutions Oriented Stories. Good news next week, episode 66. Once again, I always like to remind you, I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. You got your morning news show, your afternoon DJ set. We've got old time radio, vinyl spins, all the corporate reports and live news. It is a good time. Love to see you join the Media Monarchy community at MediaMonarchy.com slash join. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Thanking you so much for watching and listening and supporting our work and reminding you, as always, like Jella Biafra of the Dead Kennedys once said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult. All remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks. Well, would anyone else like a bite of banality? I would.